All right, so in today's story, I would like to continue with the reviews and would like to specifically look at a review on probability theory, okay? As I have already said, all these reviews should be relevant in our subsequent tutorials, okay? So by the close of today's tutorial or after today's lesson, you should be able to define some basic concepts in probability theory and also identify the types of operations on event and also to describe probability and also to discover the laws of probability and solve some examples under the addition rule, the multiplication rule, conditional probability, total law of probability, base rule, okay? And finally, to basically identify the types of forms of combinatorics, okay? This is basically concerned with counting, selection, or arrangement of objects within a finite or discrete system, okay? All right, so now let's jump into our first session known as definitions. So what's the first definition that we want to consider? So we'd like to consider experiment, okay? So when we talk of experiment in status text, what do we mean? An experiment is any process that generates well-defined outcomes, okay? And we have two types of experiment. We have a deterministic experiment and we have the random experiment, okay? Let's take a look at the first type, which is a deterministic experiment. So this is the type of experiment whose outcomes can be predicted with certainty when repeated under the same conditions, okay? For example, um, distance between two points, okay? We know that this outcome is going to be constant. For example, you take the distance between country A and country B, and let's say you observe 800 kilometers. The next day or the next time you try to take the same measurement, is going to be 800 kilometers, it's, it's not going to change, okay? So this will be constant. Another type is throwing a stone in the sky, okay? Anytime you throw a stone in the sky, we know the outcome that the stone will fall down, okay? Also, cooling water below zero degrees Celsius, okay? We can predict this outcome that the water what is going to freeze, okay? So these are some examples of deterministic experiment. Now let's take a look at the second type of experiment known as the random experiment, okay? So this is the type of experiment whose outcome cannot be predicted with certainty when repeated under the same conditions, okay? For example, um, the number of babies who are born in a hospital each day, okay? You know that this number cannot be predicted with certainty. It can assume any positive integer, okay? The same applies with the number of customers who enter a bank in a given time interval, when a bank is open, it can be zero, it can be one, it can be any positive integer as well. And also, if you want to observe the number of rows in a football match, we know that this must be an example of what random experiment because the number can vary, okay? Even a football match itself is a type of random experiment because we are going to observe three outcomes. There are three possible outcomes. It can, it can either go in the favor of win, draw, or lose, okay? So we have three possible outcomes in a football match, which is another type of random experiment in itself, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the um, next definition on a sample space. So when we talk of sample space, what do we mean? Sample space in statistics. So a sample space is a set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment, okay? So let omega denote our sample space where this omega can be discrete or continuous. You can relate omega to the universal set that we look at from our previous tutorial, okay? So um, when we talk of a discrete sample space, what do we mean? So this is a type of sample space um, in which, um, or let's say this is a type of sample space that consists of a finite number of elements, okay? So in the case where the element of the sample space is an interval of the number line or yeah, it's an, it's, a, it's an interval of the number line, then we can say that, that that sample space will be a continuous sample space, okay? All right, so let's take an example. Um, this is going to be an example of a discrete sample space. A single die contains six spaces. Therefore, when it is thrown, there are going to be six possible outcomes, okay? We can observe a one, a two, a three, four, five, or six, okay? But, so this will be a, an example of a discrete sample space, but this is finite, okay? And let's take an example of a continuous sample space. Let T denote the life in years of an, of an electronic component. Then we can define the sample space as what um, T such that T is greater than or equal to zero, which can also be described using the interval notation, okay? So we know that the life in years can be, will be definitely continuous, okay? It can 
operates from the beginning year, which is from term zero to let's say two and a half years or two years, three months. So this will give him the continuous, okay? All right, so now let's take an example of, um, let's look at the next definition known as event. Right, so what is an event? An event is a subset of a sample space of a random experiment, okay? And given the following as a sample space from our, previous, uh, from our previous example, right, where we have a sample space, which is finite from one, two, three to six, let A denote the number of obtaining an odd number when we will refer that, okay? So then we can define A as a set which consists of this element, one, three and five, okay? So basically an event is going to be a subset of the sample space. And we know this notation from our previous example is a subset. So A is a subset of the sample space, okay? All right. So now let's look at operations on event. Um, basically we want to look at how to form new events using some mathematical operations, okay? So since an event is a subset of a sample space, we can combine event to form new event using various set of operations, including the union, okay? Intersection, as well as complement, okay? So let's start with the union. How do we form new event with union, okay? So the union of two sets is a set of all elements in A, or set B or both, okay? So we can represent it in this form. A union B is defined as X such that X belongs to A or X belongs to B, okay? So let's take an example. If set A consists of this element one, two, and three, we have another set B which consists of this element three and four. Then A union B should consist of element in A or element in set B, okay? So here yeah, or both. So in here, you're not supposed to repeat the element that are common, you're just supposed to pick one of them. So finally, A union B is going to be one, two, three, and four, okay? All right, so now let's assume that we have an event and that event is continuous. This is a, a type of semi open interval. So the event E is from two to 10 and event F is from zero to five. I want to find the union between these two events. So, what is going to be the union of event E and event F? This is going to be um, an open interval from zero to 10, okay? How do we obtain this? Let me quickly show you this. So let's assume we draw a normal line. This is the interval for the first event E, and we also have the interval for the second event F. So we want to find the event that belongs to F and all that belongs to what event E, right? So this will be the event, okay? From zero to 10. This means that we are looking at event that um, belongs to um, interval E as well as interval of the event F, okay? Then we have this open interval from zero to 10. All right. So now let's continue. Right, so um, this is basically going to be a Venn diagram showing the event between A union B, okay? All right, so now let's move on to the next part. Now I want to look at how to form new event using intersection. <coughs> Sorry for that. How do we form new event with intersection, okay? So the intersection of two sets, the set of elements common to A, and B, okay, and we can define it in this form, A intersection B is X such that X belongs to set A and X belongs to set B, okay? So for example, if we have this set, which consists of this element one, two, three, and B, which also consists of this element three and four, then the intersection between these two events is going to be what? The element that are common. So we have only three, which is common between these two. So we have three as the um, the intersection between these two events, okay? Now let's assume we have um, events which are continuous. So we have event E from, which is an interval from two to 10 and event F from zero to five. So what will be the intersection between these three events? We will have a close interval from two to five. Okay, how do you obtain this? Let me quickly show you that. Um, let's say we draw a normal line. So there's the event for the first interval E and we also have the event for the second interval F. So we are looking at the 
elements that are common between these two intervals. And we have a to be from two to five, okay? This there are the elements that are common between these two. So we have the intersection between event E and event F to be a closed interval from two to five, okay? All right. So um, this is basically going to be a Venn diagram showing the intersection between two events, A and B, okay? All right. So let's look at how to form the event with complement, okay? So the complement of an event A is a set of elements in the sample space that are not in the event A. So the complement of A can be denoted by A prime or A bar or A superscript C, okay? I'm going to make use of A prime. So the complement of A is basically defined as X such that X does not belong to the event A, okay? For example, if you have a sample space which consists of this finite set, and we have another event A which consists of these elements one, three, and five, then the complement of A will be those elements that does not belong to A, but they are in the sample space. So we have two, four, and six, right? So if we have a sample space which is continuous from the closed interval from zero to 100, and then we have another um, event B, which is a semi open interval from zero to 25, then the complement of B is going to be a closed interval from 25 to 100, okay? You can also obtain this as follows. Let's say you draw a normal line. So this is a sample space from zero to 100. Um, you have your first, um, your, your, your event B, which, which is a semi open interval from zero to 25. So your complement of B will actually be from 25 to 100, okay? So I think this shouldn't, um, I think there's, there's a mistake here. Okay, uh, let me see. So I uh, can correct this. Okay, this should be from 25 to 100. So I think I did a different thing altogether. Okay, but this basically how to um, get an interval. Okay, so if this is from 0 to 25, and our event B was, let me take a look. Event B was close, so I should have closed this part. Okay. So then this will be a complement, okay? All right. So there's going to be a Venn diagram showing the, um, um, showing the complement of an event, okay? All right. Now let's look at some remark. Um, there's going to be a set difference. So a set difference denoted by A minus B or A for slash B consists of element that are in set A but not in B, okay? For example, if we have a set which comes of this element, set A, one, two, and three, and set B comes of this element, three and five, then the set difference of A and B is going to be one and two, okay? Um, this is also similar to A intersection B complement, okay? So we are just looking at the element that belongs to only set A, but does not belong to set B, okay? When you have these two elements, set A and set B, right? So um, the set difference is basically, the set difference of A minus B is similar to A intersection B complement, or only the element that belong to set A, okay? So this is this, this, this basically a Venn diagram showing the set difference between um, a and B, okay? So we are just looking at an element that belongs to only A when you have these two events, okay? All right, so let's look at some special types of events. We want to start with mutually exclusive events, okay? So when we talk of mutually exclusive events or disjoint events, what do we mean? Events A and B are mutually exclusive if they have no element in common such that the intersection will be a null set, okay? In other words, we can also say that um, two events are set to be mutually exclusive when their occurrence are not simultaneous, okay? For example, we have our sample space, which is a finite set from one to 10, and we also have one event to be um, an element consists of two, four, six, another event consists of elements one, three, five, and then the last element C, which comes of this element, right? Now you can see that A, B, and C are mutually exclusive because the intersection is going to be what? And now there's no common element between these three events, okay? So this is an example of um, mutually exclusive event, okay? 
So this is going to be a Venn diagram showing which one is closing event, okay? All right, also known as this print event. Okay, now let's take a remark. A collection of non-empty cells that are disjoint and their union is uh, equal to that of the sample space is called a partition sample space, right? That is, um, if you have a sequence of events and their union is actually similar, let's say a finite sequence of events and their union is similar to that of the um, sample space, then we consider that, that sample space to be a partition sample space, okay? So let's look at this example. So we have three, four sequence of events here. We have A1, A2, A3, and A4. And can see that these are disjoint because they don't have any common um, elements. So these are disjoint events. And we can see that this disjoint event is actually similar to that of the sample space. So this is an example of a partition sample space, okay? All right. Now let's look at a certain type of special event known as independent event, okay? When we talk of independent event, what do we mean? Events are independent if the occurrence of one event has no influence on the likelihood of the other event, okay? So for example, when you roll a fair die, right, and you flip a coin, the probability of getting any number phrase on the die cannot influence the probability of getting a head or a tail on the coin, okay? Another way to think of this is to consider the two experiments as different. So when you roll a fair die, we have six possible outcomes, right? And when you flip, when you flip a fair coin, we are going to observe two outcomes, either head or tail. So this is basically different from the first experiment, okay? So you can consider this to be independent because these are two different experiments all together, okay? All right. Now let's look at adult pressures on event. We wanna start with a commutative law. So with a commutative law, it states that A union B is similar to B union A, right? And also A intersection B is similar to B intersection A, okay? And we also have the associative law, which states that A union into bracket B union C is similar to A union B in bracket union C, okay? And also A intersection B intersection C bracket is equal to that of A intersection B bracket intersection C, okay? And we also have the distributive law, which states that A union into bracket B intersection C is equal to a union B in bracket, intersection A union C in bracket, okay? And also A intersection in bracket B union C is similar to that of A intersection B in bracket, union A intersection C, okay? We also have the De Morgan's law, we state that A union B in bracket, right prime is equal to that of the complement of A complement, intersection B complement, okay? And also A intersection B into bracket complement is equal to that of A complement union B complement, okay? We can easily prove all of these um, laws that the commutative law, associative law, the distributive law, as well as the Morgan's law by making use of a Venn diagram, okay? It can easily be proved, okay? All right, now let's look at some remark. The complement of the sample space is equal to that of the null set, and that the complement of the null set or the empty set is equal to that of the what? Um, the sample space, okay? And also A union, that of the sample space will be equal to that of the sample space. And also A union, A complement will be that, will be equal to that of the sample space, okay? Also A complement in, in bracket complement will be equal to the event A. And also A intersection complement, eh, sorry, A intersection and null set will be equal to the null set. And A intersection, A complement will also be equal to that what the null set, okay? All right.